The Santa Barbara Channel is one of the best places to see wildlife along our coast and in the world, actually. And this Sunday, the Channel Islands Harbor is holding its 25th anniversary of the celebration of the Whales Festival. And who better than our Sarah Pila to join us live from the Maritime Museum with a preview. Girl, you get all the lucky assignments. <laughs> Hey, I love bringing these stories to you. So I'm here at the Channel Islands Maritime Museum, which is at the Channel Islands Harbor here in Oxnard, California. And the harbor is the site of the 25th anniversary of the celebration of the Whales Festival happening this Sunday. But what makes this anniversary extra special is that these waters here have just been designated as a whale heritage site. It's one of less than a dozen in the world. And they got this accolade because of their work in ecotourism and conservation. And this is really a world-class destination for whale watching. <laughs> the sight and sound of a whale breaching is a high point of being on board a whale watch. Jacob Hensley is an eco-tour operator with Channel Islands Whale Watching, and providing this front row seat to visitors is what makes his job so special. You know, everybody sees pictures of uh, whales jumping in Hawaii and stuff like that. And I mean, it happens literally right outside the harbor. Jacob and his boat, Ranger 85, are in their busy whale watching season that starts from the day after Christmas to the end of April. Once the boat departs from Oxnard, it heads to Anacapa Island, which is one of the Channel Islands. The area is a biodiversity hotspot, making it a prime location for whale watching. You have the Santa Barbara Channel. You have the coast, you have the, the island, you know, Anacapa, everything's so close together. You know, you just have all the life that teams through there. The Santa Barbara Channel, which includes the waters within the Channel Islands National Park and Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, was recently designated a whale heritage site by the World Cetacean Alliance, making it only one of a handful worldwide. Holly Loheis is a marine biologist and says the designation recognizes excellence in responsible tourism. Educate the tourists to know that they're picking tour operators that understand what the regulations are. The designation coincides with the Channel Islands Harbor's 25th anniversary of the celebration of whales on April 7th. The milestone event honors the whales migration through the area and promotes sustainability to ensure the sea is a safe and healthy marine environment. We hope we could use these iconic species to remind everybody of our direct connection and what we need to do to really minimize our environmental footprint. Right hand side, right hand side, guys. And each time Jacob is leading a whale watch, he sees it as an opportunity to educate his guests on the importance of protecting these animals and says the new designation brings even more awareness. I'm really glad that they're actually starting to take time to designate these areas and uh, kind of open people's eyes up, you know, worldwide um, for the spectacular you know, wildlife viewing that we have here. Safeguarding this area as a world-class destination for generations to come. Oh, how cool. And the festival is again this Sunday from 11 to 3. And to talk more about it, I have Doug Riffenberg, the executive director here at the Channel Islands Maritime Museum. So big community festival here on Sunday. Kind of explain what people can expect. Well, we have a, a big area during the festival here all the way from the farmer's market all the way down to the Maritime Museum. And it really uh, symbolizes the migration of the whale uh, coming down from Alaska along the California coast. And so there are a number of different um, stations and areas. There's going to be a concert, chalk artist. They'll be able to shop at the markets. There's going to be all kinds of activities for children and families. It's really going to be a fun event. Here at the Maritime Museum, we're going to have some educational stations that are really great for the kids and families because they'll be able to see some and learn about, um, uh, about the whale through some interactive and touch-friendly kind of activities. So, for example, yeah. they'll be able to actually crawl through a, a blue whale artery, which is which is so big, so I can um, only imagine. <laughs> yeah, so very very uh, educational and fun event. We're going to have food trucks, and we've got a number of nonprofits here as well that are 
that are uh, helping to uh, create sustainability in our oceans and protect the wildlife out there off our coast. Yeah, super important. And you mentioned the artery that kids will get a chance to go through, enormous. But over here, we have some whale bones where I think people can also really see how large these animals are. Yes, they're uh, massive animals. Uh, this is uh, part of our maritime museum here at the Channel Islands Maritime Museum. And here we have a, a gray whale jawbone. So you can just, just uh, imagine the size of that animal and then, a, and then a rib bone as well. So. Yeah, and so that's just the gray whale, and I think to see uh, it up close, it really does kind of show just how massive these amazing animals are, Giselle, that are right in our backyard. Oh, they can teach us so much, as you know, with their sonar and their radar. Um, have you ever seen, Sarah, a whale when you go out on these tours? You know, I have not been lucky enough to see one, but I, I will get there one day, Giselle. Uh, I've seen, though, the pod of dolphins, um, and when you see hundreds of thousands of dolphins, I mean, it is like an a amazing experience, but oh, at least we it, have it right here. We my can see bucket it list, too, Sarah. My bucket list. Listen, get out there this weekend. Sounds like a whole lot of fun. We'll be right back, everyone. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. We as 